It's time for another behind the scenes look here at the Calibrated Success Tech Center. We're working with our fuel injector test bench and one of the questions I get all the time is, uh, how does it work? How does the machine operate? And the first thing you'll notice is that there is no cleaning bath in the front of this thing. This is a precision measurement instrument. I do all my injector cleaning offline. So I do all my injector cleaning with just what you see here. So I'm not gonna insult you guys by trying to put a $60 ultrasonic bath in the front of your fancy measurement machine. Instead, I just recommend that you go get yourself a inexpensive little ultrasonic bath. And in that bath, if you want to clean fuel injectors well, we use a solvent, so methanol, which is half of what windshield washer fluid is, with a couple drops of Dawn, which is a great surfactant. Those inside this heated bath will do a pretty good job of cleaning these injectors if they can be cleaned. Not all injectors can be cleaned, but if there's just a little bit of goo in them, that does a really good job. And then we just use some brake clean to clean them all off, get all the liquid off them before we put them in the bench. So that said, we have our injectors in the bench. We come over to our touch screen and we start with a break in and we just touch that. And the break in cycle just runs the injectors. So it does a certain number of shots at a certain pulse width. It changes to another pulse width over time. And it's just enough to get the fluid flowing through the injectors and warm up the coils and get the seats broken in. So we let that run for a while. Luckily, I've already done that on this set, so I can go ahead and cancel that operation right now. And next up is if we want to see if these four injectors I'm testing are close to each other, then we just go right here to this injector balance test. And we start that. Now that test you can see is scheduled for 120 seconds. You see we're about five seconds into it. And it runs all the injectors. And then over time it starts dropping an individual injector. So you can see it's missing number one. And a little bit later it's gonna drop number three. It's gonna do that for a little while. And then we'll see that it drops number four. And guess what's next? After a few seconds, we're gonna drop number two. And so by running that sequence, we can see what's flowing and what isn't flowing at any given time. The online tool is gonna to look at all this recorded data and it will process it and figure out the difference for you. Now you can see that it just changed pulse width, so we got a little bit more fuel coming out of the injectors than we did on the previous run. So it runs all the way through the procedure, again, at a different pulse width. This gives us a couple different points along the flow curve to look at matching these injectors, and that's what comes into that output report that you see posted on our website. Or if you're using our machine, that's what we're gonna email you after you upload your data. So we just kind of work our way through all these. And you get to listen to my annoying voice while we just keep on working through this, but we're almost done with this test. And that's it for flow measurement. We just let it run a little bit to purge the lines. And we're, we're gonna record our data and it's running it to the USB stick as we speak. And eventually, in a few seconds here, this thing will just shut off. And that's it, you just completed the injector balance test. So we could, at this point, go ahead and eject the USB cartridge, upload that data and get our balance data, or we could just jump right into the flow test. Now the flow test, uh, what we see here on test number two, injector flow, that is the characterization test. So that runs our specific routine where we're gonna run a series of tests in different conditions and that's how we find out what this injector really does. So we'll just go ahead and start that. And it loads the rail and just starts running it and we're doing a sweep. You can hear it changing the tone as pulse width changes. And so we get a good sweep at this voltage and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna see the intensity of the LEDs change when we start the next sweep because we're changing the system voltage as we do the next data set collection. 
So here you see how the LEDs are a little bit dimmer because we're running at a lower voltage on purpose. Now our test procedure loosely follows J1832 but does not exactly follow 1832. We get a lot of discussion online about that. The truth is 1832 is a suggestion from Society of Automotive Engineers on how we test fuel injectors, but it's not the end all be all only way to get the job done. In fact, having worked at a bunch of different OEMs throughout my career, I've seen how they all do their injector testing and each one of them has a slightly different procedure, but what's important is the types of data that they are recording and under the conditions that they are recording it. So although GM, Ford, and Chrysler don't exactly run J1832 tests, you don't need to either. What you need is the right data in the right conditions and then the right post-processing, and that's what we do here. So the injector bench is running the correct conditions right now, it is saving that raw data to the memory stick, and you will upload that to our online tool. Our online tool does all the processing for you and spits out a file that you can just copy and paste right into your tuning software. So we're doing all the heavy lifting for you in the background. We don't have to worry about doing it in real time on the machine because the processing of the data file afterward literally takes seconds. But what we're doing here is we're just running through sweeps at different voltages, getting the relationship of opening time and flow rate and voltage drawn across all these different conditions so that we can give you the right data to process later. Now you can also see, because I'm recording this with a camera, your naked eye, it's a little harder to see, but you can see because of the frame rate of the camera, you can see that we're pulsing these injectors in order so we actually use a firing order the same as you would on your fuel rail so we run a common four cylinder firing order and so you can kind of see it dancing around there in the spray box so we can see what our spray pattern is at any given time we can kind of see what each injector spray pattern looks like so we can see if there's one injector that looks noticeably different from the others pretty easy to pick that up with our machine we don't have to wait for it to fill the durette. We see that in real time. And our balance tests also would have captured any mass flow or volume flow differences there. What we're seeing here is just the spray pattern change. And so we're running again, just a few more sweeps. This test takes a total of about 414 seconds to run. You see we're about halfway through it at the moment. And so, We'll just let it keep on banging through. Now this is interesting. The machine is quiet. The injectors don't appear to be firing. What's happening here is we're actually running the injectors at a very small pulse width. And that pulse width is smaller than the minimum pulse width needed for any fuel to come out of the injectors. It's very important that you do this because we're finding that min pulse width for the injector and we're also going to find that non-linear flow zone for these injectors if they have it. And so the only way you get that is by trying to record all these very small pulse widths. So you're going to see a few failed pulse widths here where we come in and out, nothing really came out of the injectors. And eventually we'll get to a part of the routine where it's running a little bit larger pulse width and you'll start to see some significant amount of fuel coming out of the injectors and the flow meter will capture that. So now you can hear it, now you can see a little bit of fuel coming out of it. This point in the testing right here will show up in the post-processing as the min pulse width. You see now we go to a slightly larger pulse width. We get a little bit more flow out of the injectors. That's pretty important because that's what's gonna make all of our low pulse phenomena tables correct, it makes it a lot easier to tune the streetcars. You know, we're not so much worried about this on those 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 horsepower cars, but all those streetcars that you want nice drivability and traffic or, gosh, I don't know, emissions compliance, this is step one. We gotta know how much fuel is coming out of the injector even at small pulse widths. So, we test at small pulse widths. And that data that we're collecting here goes into the pile of stuff that we process later, and that's how we get the really accurate plug and play data for you later on. You see now 
now we're about three fourths of the way through the testing. So we're about 10 minutes into this whole procedure between the injector flow balance test and the actual flow characterization test. This whole operation can be done in less than 20 minutes start to finish if you got everything all set up and ready to go. So it's pretty easy to get through a set of injectors pretty fast using our hardware. You see more steady states here. The other thing you'll notice is that we run eight injectors in the rail, but we're only testing four at a time. And the reason we found is that testing four injectors at a time out of the group gives us a pretty good average of what that group is doing, as long as they were all close to each other. And it smooths out any disturbance in part to part, kind of gives us the real average of the whole set. And it means that we also can have another set of alternate part number injectors in there that we can run the testing on without having to break the seal on the hydraulics. So it makes less mess. We can get through more testing quicker. So there you go. Our test is done. Everything's written in the USB stick. And all we need to do is push the little eject button. Beep. There we go. We take this guy out and we'll upload the data file from this onto our online tool. And almost instantly, we'll get an email back with our plug and play data.